Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, by now you have seen Arnold and Mobile Gamers video talking about how Pow is the worst character in the game. Pow is going to be the, the, the worst future. hero in the game? What if I told you Pow is not the worst character in the game? Now I know what you're thinking when you hear me say that. I'm sorry sir, it's time for you to leave. But just hear me out here. They called that video a game of hacks. But now, this video is going to be a game of facts. Wait, that's not right. There, that title's much better. So in this video, we will go over the kit, what Pow has that he brings to the table, whether or not it's anything special. We'll talk a little bit about his Zeta ability too. So let's just go ahead and start out with his kit, and then we'll break down each thing from there. Looking at Pow's kit, he has his basic attack, Stride and Strike, he has two special abilities, Sakala and Sonic Grenade, and then he has Unique for Pipita, which you'll notice has a Zeta ability on it. We'll go over that Unique last. First up, his Stride and Strike, it deals physical damage to the target enemy if Pow has any buffs, he deals damage again, and if the target has any debuffs, deal damage a third time. It will be one attack with three hits on it, it won't be three separate attacks. So keep that in mind. You'll also notice the base damage on this is very, very bad. Look at that. 2224 to 2458. That is some really bad damage numbers for basic attack. Base. Now, getting past that basic attack and its pretty bad base damage, you have the next special ability called Sakala. All allies gain offense up for two turns. Pal gains 40% turn meter. This is a pretty good ability. It's offense up for everyone on your team. It's guaranteed. There's no RNG like Jedi Knight Anakin's AoE attack. There's not many characters in the game that can do offense up for your entire team, regardless of what allies are on there. So this ability does have some uses there. Also, a little side note, whenever he uses the ability, you will hear him yell Sakala in the game. It's a nice little nod there and a little nice attention to detail too. Following Sakala, you have his other special ability, Sonic Grenade. It deals physical damage to all enemies with a 70% chance to inflict defense down for two turns. The damage on this is kind of mediocre as well, just like his basic attack. The defense down is kind of an underwhelming defense. The defense down is kind of an underwhelming debuff to have for an AOE attack like this. It would probably be better if you had something like offense down or maybe even no, not tenacity down. Tenacity down would be too overpowered, but. Defense down isn't exactly uh, in high demand ability, though you do have characters like Commander Luke Skywalker now and Wedge and Tilly's who both do a lot of damage or apply stuns or debuffs to targets that have defense down. So he has some synergies with other rebel characters when it comes to defense down. So there is that to consider. So it's not going to be something you're going to use a lot, especially if you can keep using Sakala. But by now you've probably noticed both Sakala and Sonic Grenade have 11 turn cooldowns on them with the Omegas. The Omega upgrades take those from 12 turn cooldowns to 11 turn cooldowns. Those seem like some pretty long cooldowns, but thankfully that's what he has his unique for. Whenever a rebel ally uses his basic attack, it reduces Pal's cooldowns by 1. We'll go to the Zeta here in a minute, but just focusing on that first part, whenever a rebel ally uses a basic attack, it reduces Pal's cooldowns by 1. That is what allows him to be able to use his specials more often. You're not actually going to be having to wait 11 turns to use Sakala or Sonic Grenade. So you can breathe a sigh of relief with looking at that. But even so, that means he is restricted to using a lot of rebel allies around him. If you don't have rebel allies around him, you're not going to get much use out of him. He's never going to be able to use those special abilities. So that is something to consider. And then going to that Zeta ability there on his Forpipida, Pal gains 5% turn meter every time a rebel ally uses a basic attack. When this Zeta was first revealed in the game back when Pal first came out back in March or April, I actually went on Twitter and basically called it one of the worst Zeta abilities I've ever seen. It looks like a pretty bad Zeta and that is something you should look at and you notice why would I want to put a Zeta on that. And then of course someone in my guild did a bet with me saying that if I Zeta'd Pal, he would do a video of him falling out of his chair. So of course, being who I am, I decided to go ahead and Zeta Pal, and then he sends me this video. Okay, Mick Mole, I am only doing this once, so relish it. I don't believe you actually Zeta'd the freaking Pal, alright? Ah, shit! So, a big thank you to Dahlia Bombcover over in Republic for sending me that video. And yeah, that was uh, that was the beginning of my Odyssey with Zayn Pal. And then I realized that as I started to use him in other modes, 
He actually starts to become a bit useful. He is useful in territory battles if you stick him under something like a Commander Luke lead, where Rebel allies counter. He can also gain bonus turn meter and cooldown reductions from that because counters are basic attacks. So with all of that in mind, let's go ahead and just talk about some theory crafting and just what he can actually be useful for. And the main video I'm going to be using for this is a Rancor raid where I team him up with Commander Luke Skywalker under a wedge lead with Biggs, Raid Han with a Zeta on his unique, and then of course my pal with his Zeta on his unique. And we will just talk about what you can use with pal what kind of damage you can expect from him and first up is going to be the basic attack we went over that earlier with the horrible damage numbers on that but as it turns out there's a reason for that because of the triple attack that you can do with that and once you start stacking up that offense up and maybe even get a crit damage up on pal in the process you can actually end up doing a lot of damage with his basic attack what it's just an ordinary crabby oh my goodness now, keep in mind, that is a lot of damage, but he also had crit damage up and offense up, so he's not always going to be consistently dealing that kind of damage. So take that damage number with a grain of salt, but do keep in mind, with him in there, he's going to be having offense up a lot. So you'll see during the video, he's still doing a good 8,000 at least on each of his basic hits when it lands a critical hit. And of course, since Pow is an agility-based character, he has a pretty high base crit chance as it is. For me right now, I have two pieces of gear on him at gear 11. He has about 45% base crit chance. So getting some crit damage and crit chance mods on him, he's going to be able to land more consistent crit hits, and he's also going to be able to deal bigger numbers. So once you get up to gear 12, he may be able to reach 9,000 with just the offense up. But again, that is a heavy gear investment for a character that you still have to use a lot of setup for his basic attack to get out that kind of damage. Now, another thing to consider here is Pal synergizes under your best rebel leads pretty well. In this Rancor video, I have a wedge lead, and with that, rebel allies gain 10% turn meter every time they score a critical hit. With Pal, that is 10% turn meter per critical hit he lands so in that big hit that did almost 33,000 he would gain 30% turn meter from that and then he gained another 5% from his basic unique with the rebel ally using the basic attack it also counts him into that so he will gain 5% from him using his basic attack plus the other 30% there 35% just from him doing that big attack that is a lot of turn meter to put into somebody and the nice thing is with that you don't really have to focus on mine him for speed so you can go for more crit chance crit damage based kind of mod set on him, making sure you can really boost up his offense numbers too. And the mods I have on Pal weren't the absolute godlike mods I have on other characters like Princess Leia. So there's still more damage I could put into Pal to see what he can do. Now with that in mind, you can also use him under an Admiral Akbar lead, where Rebel allies use attacks whenever any ally uses an ability that does not deal damage or is not counted as an offensive ability. So with that, that would be another way to get cooldown reductions and turn your boost to POW with the Zeta Unique. And then of course a Commander Luke lead with the Rebel allies counterattacking, like I said before. The counterattacks count as basic attacks, that means more cooldown reductions for POW. So those three leadership abilities right off the top of the mind are probably the best leads you can put POW under. Now, something else to consider here is with the basic attacks and them doing that multiple hits, that can also cause some problems here. Like in this Rancor raid, each of those hits gives 5% turn meter to the Rancor. So that's a lot of turn meter boost going to the Rancor. So he's not exactly a kind of Rancor character that you want to throw in there, but this was just a good place to test him out to see what you have. Now, going on to his other abilities with Sonic Grenade, like I said before, defense down, not exactly a high demand ability to use for your allies, but that defense down does mean he can put out more damage for other allies in the team. But of course, you already have Commander Luke who can put defense down, same with Wedge Antilles. So he's not bringing a lot to the table there with Sonic Grenade. And of course, with his unique, with the cooldown reductions. But as you'll see during this fight, because of all the attacks going out from Rebel allies, he is able to constantly keep offense up on the team. The only character that seems to really consistently lose it is Zeta Han, and that's because of his dead eye. He's going a lot, and he's just doing a lot of damage. But if you can pair up the offense up from Pow in terms with Never Tell Me the Odds with Zeta Han solo, you'll see his dead eye plus the follow up of his basic attack does a lot of damage, We're talking almost 100,000 damage in that kind of combo. So the offense up here with Pow is more making him more of a utility character for your team than actually making him a character that 
is going to be doing a lot of damage. The damage he can deal is nice, but you want him here more as a support role. And I think that is something we should be keeping in mind with him, is that he's supposed to be here supporting the team like an R2-D2 does, than something who's supposed to be here doing a lot of damage up front with these abilities. So with that in mind, you can see what he brings to this team. And of course, the one other thing we should note is he is restricted to a rebel team. If he doesn't have rebel allies around him, he's not going to get that cooldown reduction. He's not going to be really able to move fast or really making sure that he constantly gives the offense up to your entire ally team. But since rebels make up approximately half of these half of the game's roster, he does have a lot of characters out there that he can synergize with. Side note, Rebels are not half of the game, I know that. But anyways, I've stated my case to you guys about why I think Pao is at least a semi-useful character in the game. He is not one of the worst characters in the game in my opinion, but there does have to be some pretty good investment in him to make sure you can unlock that kind of potential, and that is something that you have to go up against with other characters like Commander Luke Skywalker, where you don't really have to go too much invested in him to make them a really good character in this game. But without further ado, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Is Pal one of the worst characters in the game? I'm sure you guys are going to have a lot of feedback on this. But I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more content in the future. And as always, I will talk to you guys later.